Kahi has a big show. Fingers we crossed. Are, we are, I don't know, day 475, I think. Oh, it did. You know what? Um, I'm delighted. My name's Simona, I'm the founder of Northern Power Women. And I just like, like week two, having a good old chat with an amazing woman. The what did I call you last week? Enigmatic, too cool for school. <laughs> and I was like, how do I top that? I just think you're I just think you awesome. <laughs> I'm it's gonna try that. <laughs> I, I'm gonna try it every week. But you know what? There's something that you know, we did this kind of quite impromptu last week, but I think um just before we came on on online or press record this morning, talking about getting up every morning for my seven o'clock Zoom yoga class with Marie. And Rob and I get up every morning and um, if I miss it, um, it's, I feel devastated. I feel devastated because I know she gets up every morning for us as much as we get up for her and set ourselves into a routine. What's, what's your week? What have you discovered this week with your routine? <laughs> what have I discovered this week? Well, I've discovered I can't put tents up. Um, <laughs> I uh, I decided we were supposed to take the kids to Malta this week. We got everything booked. And obviously, a couple of weeks ago, when it all kicked off, the flights got cancelled, um, which the kids were a bit disappointed because we've got family coming over and so forth. So we said, oh, it's all right. We'll, we'll go to Cornwall. I've got an apartment down there. I've got family down there. So we all got really excited about the prospect of going to Cornwall and then lockdown was announced. So I was like, right, okay, that's fine. We can we can still make that this work. We're gonna we're gonna order a tent and we're gonna build it in the back garden and we're gonna have a staycation and the, we're gonna have loads of fun with it and the kids are gonna love it. I I forgot the fact that I am the most impractical person on the planet <laughs> and completely incapable of any physical kind of spatial awareness stuff so i could probably show you a picture of the tent um it's not pretty it's not good <laughs> so it's currently being blown around the garden sort of attached by one peg and i'm gonna have to get the youtube video out later and sort it out <laughs> um but you know we've we've got a bit of a routine going at the moment with the house with the with the kids in fact talking about the kids they're hang on two seconds they're just <laughs> i'm gonna shut the door Otherwise, they will terrorise us. Um, <laughs> Homeschooling, soundproofing, running the business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jenny's just keeping an eye on them at the moment. They did. They were doing their morning stretches. So we have like a bit of a, a routine with them. We do morning stretches. Then I work out in the gym because my garage is set up as a gym. The kids sometimes come in um, to join me, generally disrupt anything that I'm trying to do. Um, <laughs> And then we have like, we, we got some mindful activities that um, one of our friends sent over to us. We do a little bit of that and just, just trying to, I think it's important to break the day up into like manageable slots so that it's still got some kind of routine to it and you're not sort of feeling a bit aimless because I think that's where things can get a little bit difficult. Yeah, and I think this is where I'm, I'm since I say we spoke last week, I've made a real point of, you know, reaching out and having conversations because obviously I'm a, a shy retiring individual like yourself you know but I, to take people out of our world is almost a bit like cutting oxygen from our, our supply and stuff when we're used to either dealing with our teams or dealing with our suppliers or dealing with our you know community uh, sponsors whatever that may be but I know you're the same as that like these are human beings they're not they're not they're not labeled as oh well I'm going to speak to them with a sponsor voice on or anything they're all yeah, real yeah. people and I think I'm I've, this is I've been I've been really mindful of this you know really great leaders um powerful influencers suddenly having that cut off and that you know where they are having that conversation in a on a train station or an airport or a coffee machine I worry about that nurturing and interaction being removed how are you dealing with that? Because you've got, a, you know, over 200 staff. We talked about the F word last week, you know, uh, and it's, you know, I've now realised it's a verb, isn't it? So it's not just a furlough, it's two furlough. So, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you shared some information, and I think that has been on, on many businesses um, and organisations, small and large alike, you know. So how are you dealing with, one, that whole people factor of them now working in different ways, and equally having less people in your life. 
Yeah, so it's an interesting one. I actually think I probably had more conversations this week, um, particularly with team members. One of them was laughing, saying, I've, I've not spoken to you this month much. I'm not sure ever. Um, because I'm I'm physically in one location and normally I'm like I'm you know I'm here there and everywhere I'm normally traveling so um, so the contact has been more and, and we we got everybody to 100% home working obviously 10 days ago we're all using this medium we're all using Microsoft Teams so we're we're catching up and it's a, a kind of cascade effect so we we have an intranet for the team so before we looked at the process for furlough um i did a video that we put out on the internet just to explain to all of the guys what we're doing and why and um, why we'd chosen to push them all to 100 percent home working rather than keeping the office going um and also sort of announcing some support for for them from a mental health perspective but i i, I don't know about you the bit that i miss I'm, I'm talking to people but i'm like i'm a great believer in the transfer of energy like i i i get a lot from that energy exchange when i'm physically in somebody's proximity and i'm also pretty tactile so the the social distancing has been really hard for me when it first came out i failed miserably on a couple of occasions because my my natural instinct when i see somebody is to go over and give them a big hug and I, you know that's incredibly good for you oxytocin and just feel good like that is what we need so i think I, i've i've kept the mental stimulus i've kept the connection with people but i do miss I miss that physical presence of people. That's really interesting. I had a conversation with one of your fellow Northern Power Women Powerless yesterday, Liz uh, Tapner. She's from Cellnet, uh, chief exec. And, you know, we've, we've never met before. We've had different conversations. And yesterday we had a conversation like this because we're both part of a, um, a Lancashire County Council 2-0 programme. So they're running a programme and we're running a programme for female scale-ups, which is very much around resilience as opposed to scaling up at this moment. But uh, the first conversation, within the first minute of our, our team's chat yesterday, she goes, I've got a real issue because I'm a hugger, you know, yeah. and, and this is really tricky for me to not have that hugging. Um, and, and I think this is where I think we talked about last week, that whole it's the physical distancing. You know, I think we've got social all over the place, but it's, yeah. this, it's a physical thing. So it's it's what can we do about that tonight? We've got the eight o'clock um, clap for our carers. And, you know, that's that's got to be some kind of transfer of energy, isn't it? That, you know, when yeah. we come out on, you know, we'll come out on the, the roof of our, our boat here and look around uh, the marina where all the flats are. and that that's maybe where we've got to try and use that as a different means of transfer of energy sam yeah for sure for sure and you know we went out last time so i set up um a, a bit of a neighborhood um whatsapp group and my kids went out when we were doing the clap and they had pans and they're banging the pans and, you know somebody like 10 doors down was like oh i heard the pans it was fantastic and that's that's connectivity isn't it that's just that's that that is a transfer of energy for sure and who um, can i ask who holds you up um you know you are a natural helper collaborator and in the last sort of six or seven days since we spoke i know that you will have helped and supported so many people you've sent me videos that i can use and, and stuff like that and i appreciate that but who holds you up oh god i'm like i'm really really lucky um People like yourself, Simone, this is as good for me as, as it is for you. It's that's an exchange that we have and that has been very positive for the last couple of years. And I'm I'm really fortunate that I've got um, some really fabulous people in my life. And it's at, at every level. You know, I've got people that I would consider mentors for me. So um, I got a text message out the blues, a guy called Jason Stockwood, who's a um, big industry figure in the insurance world, really fabulous human being. And he just sent me a text message and said, um, you know, not sure where you're up to with everything, but if you want to bounce ideas or kind of sense check any of the stuff that you're doing at the moment, I'm here, give me a call. So I called him up, had an hour on the phone with him, was really, you know, really, really helpful. But I've also got a fantastic support network at home. I mean, my, my partner, my fiance is incredible um, and she has been so supportive because obviously we are trying to juggle and, you know, there's the kids and the homeschooling, managing this process that we've got to take the, the staff through. 
and then it's just the day-to-day -day stuff the work that has to be done and I think you need you need teammates and that can be your immediate family your extended family friends business associates but you you need people who are um you know it's that expression look for the helpers you need people that are helpers and actually what I found through this whole process is that there seems to be a real gravitational pull that a lot of helpers are kind of pulling together and helping each other. Yeah, I think that's where the, the, the collaborations come from. You know, I was talking with uh, um, Sarah Waddington, who runs a astute PR over in Newcastle, and they, she's pivoted into this wider Northeast collaboration um, around not just around the economy, working with the um, the chambers and, and the LEPs and stuff, but, you know, the, vol the vent ventilator task force and stuff like that. It's, it's, and that's what excites me is these, these amazing stuff that comes out of this. And um, I think sort of my final question for you is, um, what's your guilty pleasure? Because there's a lot <laughs> of content and gifts and videos. What is it? <laughs> what do, so what is my language of love or what is my guilty pleasure? I guess. Ah. Ah, there you go. You see, what's your love language? Have you read that book? No, I have not. You'll have to share that with me and we'll share that out to the community. Look, uh, I'm, I'm it's really good. It's um, it works on the premise that different people have different languages of love. Mm. So some people um, express love with words. Some people express love with gifts and um, some with acts of service, some physical contact. Um, it's it's used as a relationship counselling book because sometimes you find that one person's language of love is is verbal and the other person's act of service and the two miss each other because they don't feel love from each other because they're not giving the love in the way that the other one receives it. It's, it's good. Just check it out. Um, but guilty pleasures. I mean, the snack jar is is getting a bit of a hammering at the moment. I think I might actually have to get a big old padlock on there. I've, I've looked at some really funny memes um, recently about, you know, what we're all going to look like when we get out of quarantine. Um, but look I'm trying to get out <laughs> yes, with the roots and uh, like the chocolate biscuits. Um, you know, I, I mean, normally my guilty pleasure would be kind of going out and socialising and kind of spending time with people. I always, you know, sad as it is, I do enjoy the gym. I do enjoy my chocolate biscuits. Um, but I think right now it, it's really, for me, weirdly, my guilty pleasure at the moment is sticking to a routine. <laughs> my usual mode of but it seems to be, uh, it seems to be working for me. Not very cool, um, sticking to a routine. <laughs> but that's good yeah but that's good for you that is properly you know out your comfort zone so I think that's fantastic I've been mainly cooking I, I absolutely love cooking that's my kind of mental downtime and whatever and since we discovered this this kind of um independent group in Liverpool uh, I am getting the best food delivered but you know didn't really need to get a bag of cheese for 10 pound because you know <laughs> Didn't really need that, but yeah, I, have, I feel like I have to eat it because I'm uh, supporting a small business. So, Absolutely. Uh, and there's so always think, time for cheese. <laughs> on that note, Sam, there is absolutely always time for cheese. And let's hope we have more cheese on next week's chat. But thanks so much. Be safe this week. Yeah, Love you, to your family. You. And you're right, with it. your Jenny is absolutely a rock star. Um, you know, I really think we need to call for some help about the tent, but, you know, we yeah, could... Yeah, I, I'm already d d working out how we can do it in a socially distant way. I I'm going to have to get onto to Burger Hills. I think that's our, <laughs> that's, our, that's our option at the moment. So, but listen, thank you so many, uh, so much for your time again and catch nice. you next week, madam. All right, take care. See you next week.